Okay, toroid fans, it's K8BYP to show you the best way to wind a toroid core. Here's a toroid that I hand wound. If you don't look too close, it looks like it was factory wound. Fairly nice job. Takes a little bit of, a little time to by hand go and separate and space the turns, but that's not difficult. So this is about 74 inches of number 16 wire. It's getting to be a bit stiff and a bit difficult to wind. And if it's straight, then it balls up and it kinks. So the way the winding machines work is that they make the wire into a spool on a metal frame that goes through the core. And then as the frame turns it, it pulls the windings onto the core. So here's how to do it by hand. I first of all, get an object like a food container well, about six or eight inches in diameter, straighten the wire out so it has a uniform curve maybe, and then wind it around that form so that uh, to minimize any off-axis bend. See that, that, that turn there it has a little bit of skew to the side. But it sh all the wire should have the same curve. And then we take one end of the wire, separate the turns out, and wind that through the core so that all the wire passes through the core. Like that. And there we've wound an inductor. Except it won't work very well. Most of the wire is way off the core. The dimensions of this core are about a half inch wide and a quarter inch thick, which is a path around the core for the wire of a little more than 1.5 inches, assume about 1.6, double the wire diameter added in. So start by taking an end of the wire and pulling off about twice that much here. And we'll start by making making a, a, a anchoring turn to a, fix this end of the wire to the core. Hold it like this and bend the wire sharply around the core, straighten the wire out, and then bend it one, two, three more times to go back through the core. And now there's three bends, and see I put the wire through the center of the core and it's humped up. That hump needs to be flattened out and then flatten the wire down through the center of the core and then down one more bend. Like that. Now where the wire is leaving there to go to the loop, just start bending that around the core. And as you bend that, that first turn is reduced in radius. Shrink it down, down, down until it becomes a little bit larger than the, the total path around the core. And keep the wire straight as it's bent around. And now see that that first loop is only an inch and a half or so diameter. And that's done by taking all this wire and rotating it through the core. Since one end of this is fixed, the, the radius will start decreasing. And keep turning and turning and bring that in so this loop gets smaller. And then straighten out areas like this in the wire. See, that's got a little curve to it. Before bending this around the core, straighten that length out, then bend it over squarely. That minimizes the amount of wire and the lost flux. And see there the wire has been brought down to a pretty small radius and it's starting to take the, the general squared off shape of the core. This right here. So I would straighten this portion out right here, bend it across the edge, and straighten this out, bend it through the center. And here are about five turns, six turns, and see the wires coming through and I've straightened it out and got ready to bend it squarely around the side of the core. So just use the wire by bending it, feeding it around the core, and, and continue to take this loop of wire and keep rotating and feeding it in. And when winding the turns on, make sure to separate them out. See where that wire's coming off the core going straight? There's a gap on the outside. Because while the turns might be touching on the inside, there's got to be a space in between them on the outside. So that avoids putting a skew in the winding, which increases the wasted wire. And now most of the wire is wound on the core. 
time to count the number of turns, see if it's close or at or beyond the number that we wanted. And now before the winding is finished, there's another 10 turns to go. I put it on the uh, sweep generator and tested for the uh, uh, stop band response, which is extremely good. Right down here where the amplifier will operate, uh, about 20, uh, about 20 uh, millivolts of signal compared to about 5 volt peak to peak. So extreme attenuation. The attenuation down here is on the order of 50 some dB. So the other choke I made has 42 turns, a little bit too much DC resistance. So I'll uh, use this one as a reference, count number of turns and unwind this one a few because all that inductance isn't needed. So there's the, that's basically the toroid process. Uh, the advantage of machine wound, especially with common mode chokes, is that the machine wound turns are very flat, true, accurate. They can measure the inductance on the fly. And the secret there is they use commercially spooled wire, which is very straight and very flat. I'm using secondhand re-spooled stuff here that has kinks in it. So if you're doing this for a critical application where a common mode choke needs to be exactly balanced, you might be better off buying one. So there it is, KBYP did it.